Cloud hosting is becoming very popular in recent years. The reason people opt for hosting their website on the cloud is because it is highly scalable, available and provides high performance with low downtime. Now what better than hosting your WordPress website on one of the leading cloud service providers platform, which is the Google Cloud. So in today's session, we're going to talk about hosting WordPress on GCP. But before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. First, we'll understand what is WordPress and what is Google Cloud Platform. Next, we'll take a look at the steps to host WordPress on GCP. Following that, we will look at the benefits of hosting WordPress on Google Cloud and we will conclude our session with the demo part where I'll show you how to host WordPress on Google Cloud. Now, moving on to your first topic, what is WordPress? WordPress is a web publishing software you can use to create a website or a blog. Technically, it could be defined as a free and open source content managing system written in PHP and paired with MySQL or MariaDB database. It can be used to not only create blogs and website, but can also be used to create directory, forums, galleries, business website, online e-commerce website, and many more. It is the most popular website building platform in the world. Just to give you an idea about how popular WordPress is, WordPress powers about 35% of all internet websites. Bloggers, small businesses, and Fortune 500 companies use WordPress then all the options combined. Now you do not need any coding knowledge to use WordPress. It enables you to build and manage your own full featured website only by using your web browsers. Now what makes WordPress so famous? To answer this, let us look at some of its features. The first feature is it is simple and easy to use. Creating content with WordPress is as simple as creating and using MS Word document. You can create posts and pages, format them easily, insert media, and with a click of a button, your content is live and on the web. And also WordPress is available in more than 70 languages. So you can choose and create content with the language you're most comfortable with. The next feature is it is flexible. Now with WordPress, you can create various types of website like a personal blog, a website, a photo blog, a business website, a professional portfolio, a government website, a magazine, a news website, an online community, and many more. You can make your website visually pleasing using themes and extend it with plugins. With WordPress, you can also build your very own applications. The next feature is user management. WordPress uses a concept of roles, which are designed to give the site owner the ability to control what users can and cannot do within the site. The site owner can assign different roles to different set of users. Generally, WordPress has six predefined roles. The super admin, administrator, editor, author, contributor and subscriber. Now the super admin role allows a user to perform all possible capabilities or functions. The administrator manages the site, editor works with the content, author and contributor write the content and subscriber has only the read capabilities. This lets you have a variety of contributor to your website and let others simply be a part of your community. The next feature is you can extend it with plugins. WordPress comes packed with a lot of features for every user. For every feature that is not in the WordPress core, there is a plugin directory with thousands of plugins. You can add complex galleries, social networking, forums, social media widgets, spam protection, calendars, fine tuned controls for search engine optimizations, and forms. These were just some of the plugins which you could use with WordPress. The next feature is it has an easy theme system. You can select from thousands of themes to create a beautiful website from the theme directory. By default, WordPress comes bundled with three default themes, but you can upload your own themes with a few clicks. Now it only takes a few seconds for you to completely customize your website. The next feature is search engine optimization. WordPress is optimized for search engines right out of the box. If you want more fine grained SEO controls, there are plenty of SEO plugins to choose from. Now these were just some of the features of WordPress. Let us move on to our next topic and see what is Google Cloud Platform. Google Cloud Platform is a suite of cloud computing services and management tools offered by Google. GCP runs on the same cloud infrastructure that Google uses internally for its end users products such as Google Search, Gmail, Google Photos, and even YouTube. It is one of the leading cloud service providers along with Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure Cloud and owns 7% of the total cloud market share. Gartner has positioned Google as a magic quadrant leader among the furthest three position vendors. 
Google Cloud's global network spans across 25 regions with 76 zones and is available to the users from 200 plus countries and territories. Now a region is a specific geographical location where you can host your resources and a region can have three or more zones. Now, what are the resources GCP provides us? Google Cloud Platform provides various services in different domains. Let us take a look at some of the core GCP service domain. First is the Cloud Compute Engine. This service is where we can create instances or virtual machines on GCP. Second is the Storage and Database. GCP offers highly durable, available and scalable storage solution for different types of data and access methods. Next is the Networking Service. GCP provides a fast, reliable, securing networking that scales based on user demands. Next, we have Big Data. GCP provides several services like Dataflow, Dataprox, and DataFusion to help you create a complete cloud-based big data infrastructure. Next, GCP provides all the tools developer and the development team needs to be productive while writing, deploying, and debugging application hosted on the Google Cloud. The next service domain is Identity and Security. This domain lets administrator authorize who can take action on specific resources, giving you full control and visibility to manage Google Cloud resources. Next, we have Internet of Things. GCP provides you with an intelligent IoT platform which is scalable, fully managed and integrated. It lets you connect, store and analyze data at the edge and in the cloud. The next service domain is Cloud AI. GCP provides fast, scalable and easy to use AI offerings including AI platform, video and image analysis, speech recognition, and multi-language processing. These were some of the core service domains in GCP. Now Google also provides free trial to all its new customer. It provides $300 in free credit to fully explore and conduct an assessment of Google Cloud Platform. You can use this $300 to try various Google Cloud products and learn how to use them. You won't be charged until you choose to upgrade and it is valid for 90 days. GCP also has free tier in which all Google Cloud customers can use selected Google Cloud products like Compute Engine, Cloud Storage and BigQuery free of charge within the specified monthly usage. Now until you stay in your free tier limits, these resources will not be charged. Now we are talking about GCP free tiers because we are going to use it for our demo. Now let us move on to our next topic and see the steps to host WordPress on GCP. The first step would be to sign in into your Google Cloud console. If you're new to Google Cloud, you can just sign up for an account by providing your address and your credit or debit card details. It is a very simple process and it won't take you long. Next, after that, you have to first create a new project in the Google Cloud. You will find first project on the top left corner. From there, you can create your project. The next step is selecting a WordPress instance. For this, you have to go to the navigation menu, which is on the left hand side and under that select marketplace. Now Google Cloud Marketplace will allow you to quickly deploy functional software packages that run on Google Cloud. Even if you're not familiar with services like Compute Engine or Google Cloud Storage, you can start up with familiar software packages without having to manually configure the software or the virtual machine, the storage or network settings. Next, you have to select your WordPress instance from the GCP Marketplace. Now there are various deployment of WordPress in GCP. I will show you in the demo part. So in today's session, we'll select WordPress certified by Bitnami because it is quite simple and straightforward to install. You will find this under blocks and CMS column. Next, it will ask you to configure your WordPress instance. You can make changes according to your convenience. After the configuration is done, you can simply click on deploy. And after a few moments, your WordPress website is deployed on Google Cloud Platform. But this is not the end. Your site is only accessible via an IP address. So you'll have to map a domain to the IP address. This step is important because if somebody has to access your website, they will prefer to enter the domain name to your website rather than the IP address. You can just register for a new domain name if you do not have one and link it to your WordPress website. Next, you have to set up an SSL certificate which stands for Secure Socket Layer. Now, this is a type of digital certificate that provides authentication for a website and enables an encrypted connection. This step is not mandatory, but it is recommended. Now let us move on to the next topic and see some of the benefits of hosting WordPress on Google Cloud Platform. The first benefit is uptime. Businesses such as big e-commerce stores, trading sites and news sites rely heavily on optimal server uptimes. They would want their servers to be up and running always because even with a slight interruption in the service, it can cause them a lot of financial damage. But Google Cloud Engine is available for more than 99.9% .9 of the time. So companies can be assured they won't have this problem. Next, it is simple to deploy. As I've told you in the previous topic, how simple it is to deploy WordPress on the Google Cloud. 
I will also show you how simple it is. It also gives you complete liberty to make changes to any of your root files. With GCP hosting, you will get high performance consistently no matter how much traffic you receive. The third benefit is reliability. Google Cloud Engine uses the same infrastructure as other Google apps like Gmail and YouTube, which means your website is hosted on the most well-maintained hardware which is controlled by Google. So you can be assured there would not be much downtime to your website. Google constantly works on improving the services so they can provide a better customer experience. The next benefit would be scalability. Google Cloud Engine servers are highly scalable and can handle unexpected traffic spikes with ease. So imagine there is a peak time and a lot of users are trying to access your website. Now as your website is hosted on the Google Cloud, it will scale its servers up in order to match the incoming traffic. With GCP, you can also upgrade or downgrade your server size without changing the IP address. Now these were some of the advantages of hosting your WordPress website on GCP. Let us move on to a demo part where we'll host our WordPress website on the Google Cloud platform. So for our demo, I've logged in into a GCP account. It is very simple to create a GCP account. All you have to do is enter your debit card or your credit card detail and your address. Then you might be charged maybe one rupee, but even that will be refunded later. Now as you sign in into your new account, GCP will provide you $300 free credit. Now you can use this $300 to explore Google Cloud services. You won't be charged until you choose to update and it will be valid for 90 days. So the first step is creating a new project. So we'll go to my first project over here. I will just select a new project from here. We can name a project anything. So let us name it demo. I will just create it. Now you can see our demo project is created. Now let us move on and select our WordPress instance. So for that we'll go to navigation menu. Now here you have something called a marketplace. Now marketplace will allow you to quickly deploy functional software packages that run on Google Cloud. So we'll go to marketplace. Here you can see there are a few WordPress instances. But in today's session we're going to use WordPress certified by Bitnami and Automatic. But let us take a look at WordPress Google click to deploy. So we select this. Here you can see the overview of the instance and its details. The type of virtual machine, the version, the operating system and the packages it contains. Here when we go to pricing you can see how much will it cost you per month. So it will cost us 2751 rupees per month. Now let us go back and see WordPress by Bitnami. It will be under blocks and CMS so we'll just click on this. So here is our overview of our instance, its details and the pricing. And you can see the pricing is 1009 rupees. It is way more cheaper and it is very simple and straightforward to deploy. It also comes with a lot of preloaded packages which are very helpful for a WordPress website. So now we will go ahead and launch it. Now we have to configure our instance. First we have to name our deployment. So we'll just name it WordPress demo. Next we have to select a region. So for this, if you're using a free tier account, you should select a particular region only. If you go to the GCP free tier page, we can launch a F1 micro virtual machine for free only in this region, which is Oregon US West one or Lowa US Central one or South Carolina, which is US East one. So we'll go back and we'll just select US East one. Now you can select anything from B, C, D. These are just the zones available. We'll just select this. Next we have to select the machine type. So for this demo, I won't be needing too much of compute capacity. Now here the default is small with one shared virtual CPU and 1.7 GB memory. But for this demo, I'll go with micro where I get one shared virtual CPU and 0.6 GB memory. You can select your compute capacity according to your website needs. Now the micro machine type will only cost me $5.13 per month. Next we have boot disk. The boot disk type can be either standard persistent or SSD persistent or balanced persistent. So let us just go with the standard persistent disk and the boot disk size be 10 GB. We'll keep the networking at default itself. Next we'll select both HTTP and HTTPS traffic from the internet. This basically means allowing network traffic to your website. This means anyone with the access of internet can visit your website. We'll accept the term and condition and just click on deploy now. You can go back and check how much would it cost you per month. For me, it would cost $5.13 per month. So just go ahead and deploy it. 
It will just take a few minutes for Google to deploy your WordPress website. During the process, software scripts is run, WordPress is configured, the username and password for your WordPress account is generated. Now you can see our WordPress website is successfully deployed. Now let us log into a WordPress website. We'll just click on admin URL. Our username is user. We'll just copy the password from here. And we'll log in. And now we are in our WordPress website. Now let us just post something. Go to post, add new. We'll just type WordPress on GCP and we'll publish it. Now let us view our website. Here, WordPress on GCP. Now going back to our Google Cloud Platform, you will see the IP address which we used to log in will keep changing every time I restart my virtual machine. Now we have to make that static. So for that, we'll just go to navigation menu and we'll select VPC network and from here we'll go to external IP addresses. Now the type here is ephemeral. We'll make it static. We'll just name it. And we'll just resolve this. Now the IP address will be static and it won't change every time I restart my virtual machine. So this was today's demo. But after this, you still have to link a domain name to a static IP address and also set up a SSL certificate. Now a SSL certificate is a bit of code on your web server that provides security for online communication. And with this, we have come to the end of today's session. I hope it was helpful. Happy learning.